Kamsa too got a voice from the wall, and that he would be killed with the eight sons. And as somebody says, Papa's was inner voice, Kamsa's was egoistic voice. Very the difference. Purana, no. Individually, it can be interpreted any way. But we normally take it that it was a Yashidi uh, ji heard. God's voice, Pani, and only his Leela will continue. So many things are to take place after that. So, there could be. It's a Purana, you know, the Miron, Miron, this Somebody said, trust in God, like in Brinda, when shops in temple are not locked. God will see, God will protect. You remember, there are many such uh, persons who have total trust. Trust in everybody. Retired teacher in Calicut. Are you taking Ah, Total trust. The retired teacher in Calicut, who is also involved in vegetable market, he doesn't close the shop, he keeps it open. People come there, they take the vegetables, they take their money, they put their money. People who bring vegetables, they keep the vegetables, take the money. About one or two hours in the evening. And even when he sits there, somebody will come and do the same thing. He has total trust in everybody. He doesn't bother if there is any shortage. 
right now it's all and another one the other day we saw it there is a hotel and Mahavili Mahavili North Kerala there is a place called there the hotel man he doesn't have any employee he cooks he serves people go to the cash counter open the table put their money and then go back if they want to take any money that also so 50 rupees you put 20 rupees i have to take suppose i don't have money next day they will they may them anyway it is something like a house nobody feels that the absent father he is quite So here we, those are our things. Those are our stepping stone, no doubt. But that when we, if we don't bring in the God dimension, again it will not have its impact. Of course, to have the trust in God's creation, it sir is a big thing, no doubt. Next stage is we feel God is taking care. That feeling should be there. God is taking care, so there is no loss and profit. There is no mistrust. Nothing is there. And uh, some human question. Sometimes the Lord speaks through somebody, totally unknown, but it still makes an impact. The voice of guidance. So, uh, when we, when we. <laughs> As an aspirant or a devotee, we are trying to training our mind to take everything as a guidance from him. Quotation: The world we live in is a school in which observation and experience offer us immense possibilities for self-improvement. It all depends upon how we look at it, how we take it. Okay, before we go to our usual text, we thought we would uh, read the first proof of. Uh, Vision to come, come out on the first of July. Normally, every time when we prepare the vision, the legacy is we raise it before Papa in different forms. That is how we offer, and then it goes for the print, and then it goes for the people to have even center. So with that bhavana, we will try to read and go through the July twenty twenty vision. A past poem, strange mystery. Editorial. Then we will come back to the. He lives in you, and you in. When we watch the TV at home, we are transported to a different realm, flooded with interest, insight, and information. If there is a power, if there is a power, if the TV ceases to function. And gets disconnected from the virtual reality. We may blame the external factors for the interruption. Instead, if we pause for a moment and analyze judiciously, we will realize that the TV is merely a gadget, which by itself cannot function, but becomes functional with the aid of electrical power pushing through it. Thus, caters to our emotional and intellectual needs. 
At the same time, it becomes clear that the electricity by itself cannot do what the TV does. TV, the matter, electric power, the spirit, are the same. Similarly, man is not merely what he appears to be, a bundle of flesh, bones, blood and skin. Nor is he a creature living and acting solely under the impulses and thoughts arising from the mind. Beyond the exterior dynamics of the body and mind, there is within man the spirit which is immortal. It is by the power of the spirit that our life is activated in its manifold expression. Along with the above, one should know that the, spirit, the spirit's very existence is authenticated by the creation. This aspect is clarified by Biravat Papa, his outpourings in the cave, appearing in the first book, In Quest of Bhara. He says, O Ramdas, you are in Ram, that is, indwelling and or pervading reality, and out of him. You are everywhere along with him. He is everywhere along with you. He cannot leave you, you cannot leave him. He is tied to you, you are tied to him. You are in his custody, he is in your custody. He cannot go without you, you cannot go without him. He lives in you, you live in him. Still you are his slave and he is your protector. Thus it becomes clear that our body mind intellect complex, normally called the sense of individuality, becomes lively and vibrant only when the spirit presides over it. We hardly recognize this fact. Instead, we attribute everything to the sense of individuality, forgetting the enlivening factor of the spirit. Here starts misery, conflicts, struggle, and the life in our life. Spiritual journey unravels this mystery. When we advance on this path, the sense of individuality realizes that it owes everything to the spirit and at the same time treats itself as the medium through which spirit expresses this spirit is the same in all. Thus both spirit and matter are valid and relevant. As our sadhana steadily moves on along these lines, our life gradually gets transformed and is brimming with bliss and fulfillment. This month's issue of the vision carries article on spirit and matter. In my stillness, I am the calm, silent spirit that fills all space and pervades beyond. In my movement, I am all worlds, beings and things. In stillness, I am peace. In motion, I am bliss. In my integral being, I am at once the spirit and the world phenomena. Yet, a subtle separateness exists in me. I live apart as a soul. And that feeds and loves, a soul of joy and peace, a very ray of eternal light and life, and the composite whole, and yet a part. This mystery is strange, or wondrous. The difference between spirit and matter is like the difference between water and ice. Frozen water is ice, melted ice is water. It is, it is spirit in its denseness that we call matter. It is matter in its fineness that may be called spirit. If there is water and ice, water will run. The ice will stay where, as it, where it is. It does not mean that ice will not return to its original condition. It will, but its time has not yet come. Asrat Inyat Khan. Matter and Spirit by Birat Papa. Matter and Spirit, although apparently two, are essentially one. There is no distinction between them. Spirit itself is matter, matter itself is spirit. God and manifestation of God are not different. The still calm and static spirit of God has become the dynamic manifestation that we see before us as the universe. The universe and God are not different. It appears that modern scientists have found out that matter is energy. 
that is one aspect of that there is the other aspect which is still calm static former aspect of god is prakriti purusha and prakriti are one and the same the combined being of the godhead is called purushottama in the bhagavad gita who is at one it static and dynamic nameless formless reality there are also beings with the name and form so it is clear there is no difference between matter and spirit they say these are as it were the obverse and reverse of the same coin there is eternal movement there is eternal rest matter is eternal movement spirit is eternal rest. although matter and spirit appear separate they are one for truth is defined to be at once moving and not moving. this cannot be comprehended by our mind the body is unthinkable incomprehensible Spirit vibrated into matter. Hence, both spirit and matter exist. Matter, however, does not exist in the way that it appears to us. It exists as we see it owing to the delusive force of Maya, which makes the indivisible spirit seem finite and divisible to all experience. Matter has existence in the same delusive way as does the mirage in the words of Birol Papa. Brahman is at once manifest and unmanifest, manifest as the universe and manifest as Atman. He is Purusha as well as Prakriti. There is a complete, all-comprehensive knowledge. This is the car. This is the complete, all-comprehensive knowledge of God that we have to strive for. It is a yoga in which you are one with Purushottama. There you are the doer and the non-doer at the same time. Arjuna was told by Krishna. I will teach you the secret. By realizing it, you will be active in the battlefield. Still, you will be inactive. That is the supreme yoga in the Gita. So, in active life, when you have realized the truth and become the witness of your actions, you are unaffected by the result. Otherwise, you are involved because you think you are the ego. When the ego is absent. Your actions are performed for the good of the human. You do not feel that you are doing anything because your individuality ceases to exist when you realize the self. Purusha and Prakriti are one and the same. They are not different. One is dynamic, the other is dynamic. They coexist. They are diametrically opposite things. It is simultaneously in the Purushottama. To live and act in the Supreme Consciousness is the message of the Gita. So what you have to do is to surrender your ego. To free yourself from the clutches of the ego sense. Ego does not exist. It is an illusion. When you, do, when you know that it is an illusion, you are free from it. Name, form, and movement is Prakriti. Purusha is the silent witness, nameless, formless. There is an analogy given in the scriptures. It is like this: You are a serpent lying still. After some time, it moves. The same serpent it is, and was still and is moving. But here, Brahman as Purusha is stating. Brahman as Prakriti is moving at the same time. Prakriti is always moving. Purusha is never moving. In the ultimate experience, you realize they are one. When you are active, you are at the same time not active. So, serpent's analogy is not perfect. Creation, preservation, and destruction all are movements, waves. Rise in the ocean, that is creation. They remain for some time, that is preservation. They disappear, that is destruction. Water in movement is water. Water in stillness is water. They are of the same essence. You can practice the two together. Inside, 
you identify yourself with the Purusha. Outside, you see everything else. Then the sense of separation will not disturb your meditation. The external practice of seeing God everywhere and the internal identification with Brahman will be complementary to each other. Meditation on the Atman will help you to practice seeing God everywhere. And that practice will help you to experience the Atman within. Because the mind will then not go out thinking of or seeking any object. In this practice, the mind will be attuned to unity. Diversity will disappear. Diversity is the disease of the mind which can be cured by practice. You have to realize the Atman first before you can see the heart everywhere. Material progress should not be at the cost of spiritual advancement. The two must go hand in hand. Then we will have integral evolution. Material advancement must be founded on and controlled by spiritual principles and values. That alone will maintain the right relation and balance between the material and spiritual aspects of life and thereby transform the entire life into an expression of spirit. Spirit and matter are not two different Entities, but one integral. With the Divine Mother, Papa's room, Mataji picked up Prem Sudha and opened the book to the Abang beginning with the line Prabhukari Paha. Based on Birad Papa's original poem in English entitled after seeing the lines of the Marathi Abang softly, Mataji remarked, See how Papa has mingled the eternal and the transient so beautifully in every song. Papa takes us to the highest spiritual state and speaks of the finite state of Namarupa. Now in this song, Papa starts by telling us, Prabhupari Puha, and then goes on to say, Tome Ase Ahi. Meaning, I am like that. Then Papa tells us that he is the body. Thus, he tells us that he is everything. If you care to read Papa's poem carefully, you will find the same intermixture of the eternal and the non-eternal. We too can realize how they cover all aspects of life. Every poem of Papa refers to each one of us as his amsha, his samsha or particle then to the universe as his universal body, and finally to the one who transcends everything. One who is all that is manifest and unmanifest and is yet incomparable. This is the Purushottam aspect of Papa, the Nirguna aspect of God. When Papa speaks of Nirguna aspect of God, it is too difficult for us to understand Mataji. Mataji, it is natural that it should prove difficult to understand. He cannot even understand his manifest and unmanifest aspects, though they are as plain as the two sides of our hands. How can we comprehend something which is beyond everything? But Papa speaks of it in a simple language as possible. Every poem of his is replete with the three aspects. Anyway, it is all too high and above me to understand. Mataji, don't worry. He will make you understand. You are here to understand. Shrimad Matter and spirit are co energies of the original souls of everything. The Supreme Lord who is the absolute truth. Swami Sajidananda, I am sorry. There are different answers about the existence of the world. Some call it an illusion, some call it a manifestation of God. God himself manifests in different forms. They say that forms are consciousness. Some solidified, like an iceberg. What is an iceberg? It is water in different form, solidified. This is called ice. It is not different. So the universe of names and forms is not different from the self, or truth, or reality. 
he himself appears as names and form the names and forms are not different from him the ice is not different from water that is why they say that everything is god the scriptures they say sarvam kalvidam brahman everything is brahman there is nothing but brahman because of ignorance we see them as diverse things when our vision is purified we see them as forms of god the relationship of body and with spirit by swami chidananda the body is the spiritual manifestation of the supreme being in the grossest form the spirit is the ultimate invisible form of gross prakriti as is manifest as the material universe this is not only declared this is, this is not only the declared truth in vedanta siddhanta and wait him in the nagari by jagat guru adi shankaracharya that maya is the achintya anirvachaniya shakti it is also the direct intuition experience of great god realized sages who actually beheld and discovered the oneness of prakriti and supreme parabrahma thus there is only one prakriti and prakriti they are not two entities all matter and spirit matter is involved in spirit spirit is involved in matter there is only one reality ekameva advitiyam brahma at the grossest terminal of the reality it manifests as matter and at the subtlest transcendental other extreme it is pure imponderable spirit about which the only description is to be silent body is the receptacle of the which is it is at least inner beauty reality and the spirit is the jewel within the body like a jewel within the jewel box it is not for the jewel box that one values a piece of jewelry it is because of the jewel that the box are, the box is also important matter is the container of the spirit spirit is that which makes matter valuable of important if the spirit is not there they burn matter into ash They remove it as quickly as possible. Papa, in quotation, a piece of iron is lying before us. It seems to be resting, while all its particles are in a state of intense vibration and motion. Rest and motion are combined in such a way that they exist simultaneously with regard to every object. Apply it to the whole universe. It is eternal movement, coexisting with eternal rest. eternal rest is the ideal eternal movement is the real one is spirit the other is matter ideal and real spirit and matter are the two eternal non moving and moving aspects of the transcendent one supreme ultimate truth no difference between matter and spirit ramana barshi you would hear thoughts mere matter barshi what do you mean Do you mean matter like the things that you, you see around you? You would yes, gross. Marsh, who asked this question? Who is the thinker? You would the thinker is the spirit. Marsh, do you mean then mean the spirit generates matter? You would I want to know. Marsh, how do you distinguish between distinguish between matter and spirit? You would spirit is consciousness, the other not. Marshi, can consciousness generate non-consciousness or light? Or spirit is consciousness, and the other not. Can consciousness generate non-consciousness? Devotee, the booklet "Who Am I?" speaks of Surupa Drishti, seeing the essence. Then there must be a seer and the seen. How can this be reconciled with the ultimate reality, Marshi? Why do you ask for salvation? Why do you ask for salvation, release from sorrow, etc.? He who asks for them sees them also. The fact is this: Drishti is consciousness. It 
from the subject and object and there be drishti apart from the self the self is all devotee how to discern the ego from the perfect i marshi that which arises and falls is the transient i that which has neither origin nor end is the permanent i consciousness body will continue continuous thought on the self make the mind more and more refined so that it will not think of anything but the is marshi there is the peaceful mind which is the supreme when the same becomes restless it is afflicted by thought mind is only the dynamic power of the self you of the self body are the sheets material and different from the self marshi there is no difference between matter and spirit Modern science admits that the all matter is energy. Energy is power or force. Therefore, all are resolved in Shiva and Shakti, the self and the mind. Oshas are mere appearances. There is no reality in them. Consciousness is spirit and matter combined by Nisargadatta the Maharaj. You would once I watch a mountain stream flowing between the boulders. Each boulder, the commotion was different. according to the shape and size of the boulder is not every person a mere commotion over a body while life is one and eternal maharaj the commotion and the water are not separate it is the disturbance that makes you aware of water consciousness is always movement of change there can be no such thing as changeless consciousness changelessness wipes out consciousness immediately A man deprived of outer or inner sensation blanks out, or goes beyond consciousness and unconsciousness into the birthless and deathless state. Only when spirit and matter come together, consciousness is born. Are they one or two? It depends on the words you use. They are one. They are two. They are three. On investigation, three becomes two. Two becomes one. Take the simile of phase. face mirror and image any two of them presupposes the third which unites the two in sadhana you see the three as two until you realize the two as one as long as you are in gross in the world you are unable to know yourself know yourself turn away your attention from the world world turn it away. me he and the world three are So from first I turned from the world to me, then to him. Devotee, I cannot destroy the world. Maharaj, I, there is no need. Just understand that what you see is not what is. Appearances will dissolve on in investigation, and the underlying reality will come to the surface. You need not burn the house to get out of it. Just walk out of it. it is only when you cannot come and go freely that the house becomes a jail i move in move in and out of consciousness easily and naturally and therefore to me the world is a home not a prison what you would ultimately is there a world or is there none maharaj what you see is nothing but yourself call it what you like it does not change the fact through the film of destiny You, your own light depicts pictures on the screen. You are the viewer, the light, the picture, the screen. Even the film of destiny, prarabdha, is self-selected, self-imposed. The spirit is escort and enjoys to overcome obstacles. Harder the task, the deeper and wider is self-assertion. Soul is guarded by Papa. Truth pervades everywhere, and that is my beloved. life enlivens all my beings and things that is my beloved joy eternal throbs in the hearts of all objects and that is my beloved light enlightens the entire universe that is my beloved power activates all nature that is my beloved peace perennial informs and animates whatever is visible and perceived that is my beloved o oh, ever existent truth how can i envisage and describe thee I am the witness of my silence and of my talk. I am silence. I am talk. What a wonder! Can I say that this is a mystic experience? It is more deep 
more comprehensive and mysterious. What is it then? It is an inexpressible secret. God and soul. God is soul. Soul is God. The vestures of the soul, our bodies and forms, are also God. Essentially, spirit and matter are one and the same. Spirit in movement is energy. Energy condensed is matter. There is no inner and other outer ex existence. Divine existence is all in all. In all aspects and concepts, it alone is. She or he, all is my beloved, the truth. God is form and is also formless. I endeavor to know him, he became he. Every thought and feeling of mine is inspired with his experience. I am he. Life is space, life is time, life is causeless cause. Space is infinite, time is eternal. God is life, infinite, eternal. Space encompasses all things, time engulfs all things. I am such a God, such a life, spaceless, timeless, causeless. This is imagination run riot. It's a mad attempt to find out who I am, what God is. When I talk, I am dumb. When I walk, I am still. When I work, I am at rest. I do nothing when I move the worlds. All dynamics are mine. While I am the static truth, verily I am and I am not. Can I apply this to my God? I am none else, none else but He. God is presence. God is absence. He is remembrance. He is obliviousness. He is myself. He is yourself. When I look at Him, I see myself. I have His vision. When I appear before myself, I realize Him. When I know myself. How are we mixed up? He and I. Why not conclude? He and I are one. Release the spirit by Eckhart Tolle. Ego is always identification with form, seeking yourself and thereby losing yourself in some forms. Forms are not just material objects and physical bodies. More fundamental than the external forms are the thought forms, things and bodies that continuously arise in the field of consciousness. They are energy formations finer and less dense than physical matter. They are forms nonetheless. But you may be aware, you may be aware of as a voice in your head that never stops speaking in the stream of incessant and compulsive thinking. When every thought absorbs your attention completely, when you are so identified with the voice in your head and the motion that accompany it, then you lose yourself in every thought every emotion, and you are totally identified with form and therefore in the grip of ego. Ego is a conglomeration of recurring thought. Ego is a conglomeration of recurring thought forms and conditioned mental emotional pattern that are invested with the sense of I, the sense of self. Ego arises when your sense of beingness, of I am, which is formless consciousness, gets mixed up with this is the meaning of identification. This is forgetfulness of being, the primary error, the illusion of absolute separateness that turns reality into a nightmare. Once you realize what the ego is and how it works, when forms that you had identified with, that gave you your sense of self, collapse or taken away, it can lead to a collapse of the ego since ego is identification with form. When there is nothing to identify with anymore, who are you? When forms around you die, or death approaches, your sense of beingness of I am is freed from the entanglement with form. Spirit is released from its imprisonment matter. You realize your essential identity as formless, as an all-pervasive person, or being prior to all forms and identification. To realize your true identity, consciousness itself, rather than what consciousness has identified with. That is the peace of God, the ultimate truth of who you are. is not I am this or I am that, but I am.
understanding matter and spirit by Ekanathishwaran. There is no knowledge like Sankhya, no power like Yoga. That is an ancient saying in India. These two together form one system. Sankhya providing the theoretical exposition of the human predicament. Yoga dealing with the practical steps to be taken to achieve liberation from it. Those who try to separate theory and practice are called childish in Bhagavad Gita. Kapila is believed to be the father of Sankhya and might have lived judging from the influence he exercised on the Vidya Buddha about the 6th century. According to him, the phenomenal world is founded upon two fundamental and autonomous categories of Purusha and Prakriti, spirit and matter. The spirit is eternally free, ever serene, self-sentient, while matter as the primordial source of the phenomenal world is ever changing. Perhaps a parallel to this ceaseless process of change may be seen in the theory of influx into Heraclitus, is it? the Greek philosopher, preferred when he said, what he could never plunge into the same river twice. This is true not only of the physical world, but also of the mental world, but the stream of consciousness in which images flow ceaselessly from moment to moment. It may be pointed out in this connection that Sankhya regards the physical and the psychical as nothing more than two different modifications of the primordial matter. Sankhya is dualistic in contrast to the monistic output of the Upanishads and accesses real both the world of becoming and being, both matter and spirit. The sages of ancient India turned in their quest for ultimate reality to the world within and claimed to have found it not in the objects of sense perception and intellectual cognition, not in Prakriti, but in that, in that which guarantees the reality of these objects, the cognitive self, or Purusha. According to Kapila, all experience is based on the duality of the spirit as the knowing object and the matter of the known object. While the spirit is ever serene being, matter is described as a state of tension of the three cosmic constituents of law, energy, and inertia. These three are said to be a state of equilibrium in primordial matter until it begins to differentiate itself into the endless process of cosmic evolution. According to Sankhya, the origin of human suffering lies in confusing Purusha and Prakriti. Change your spirit with changing matter. By suffering here is meant much more than physical or mental pain. The consciousness of being limited, bound, conditioned is inseparable from this human existence. It is in this sense that Patanjali uses Liberation. Liberation means the experiential recognition of the self as the same as the reality is beyond the laws of time, space and causality, which is in no way involved in the ceaseless flux of the phenomenal world and which therefore is ever free and immortal. This is the moksha of the Hindus, the nirvana of the Buddha. Shiva and Shakti by Papa. Shiva and Shakti are the twin aspects of Parmashiva, the ultimate truth. While Shiva is the static principle, Shakti is the dynamic. Shiva is the basis and support of Shakti in her multitudinous manifestation of the universal phenomena. One is the invisible, formless, omnipresent, motionless spirit. The other is the visible, moving, universal power revealed in name and form. On the infinite, calm, an unruffled bosom of Shiva, Shakti enacts her play, assuming the forms of countless worlds, producing in them the threefold movements of creation, preservation. How does the supreme and all-inclusive knowledge of God in both these aspects tend to the aspirant's attainment of creation and immortal bliss? To have the vision of Shiva is to rise above the individual consciousness which is only of the relative and phenomenal life, the cause of ignorance and misery. Surrender to Shakti is held to be the means of, for obtaining the supreme vision. Here, surrender denotes a state of transcendence of the body or ego sense, reached through the recognition of the truth, 
that all movements, changes, actions in the various expressions, both subtle and gross of life, belong to Shakti, the divine principle permeating and appearing as the entire cosmos, with all its beings, courage, creatures, and things. And the soul has realized the Shiva aspect of the great Godhead by self surrender, that is, by the dissolution of the individual sense into the universal essence of Shiva. He attains a full comprehension of the perfect being of Parmashiva, who is at once Shiva and Shakti, and also beyond them. Now the soul finds utter freedom in the knowledge of and union with both the manifest and unmanifest existence and enjoys the bliss of mortality. Adoration, worship, sacrifice, austerity, the consequent visions of the divine form are all gone through by the devotee. Before he reaches the dazzling height of the Supreme Head, this is the crowning glory of human aspiration and endeavor. It is from the deceit, from this deceit and inexpressible summit, that the God realized world beholds his own self as the self of all, his own form as the form of all. He beholds both the manifest Shiva and the manifest Shakti as indistinguishably one in the highest reality. It is evident that. First step for the soul is to dive deep into the depthless ocean of the still and tranquil spirit of Shiva and get absorbed in it. Because it is not possible for him to know the unity and oneness of all things, which are apparently diverse and conflicting, unless he realizes the basic oneness of the changing and unaffected Shiva. The ideas of Shiva and Shakti are inseparable, just as sun and its light fire and its heat, milk and its whiteness. Adore Shiva, adore Shakti, and vice versa. The mystery of the Supreme God lies in the neutralization and reconciliation of these two ostensibly opposite, passing, eternal principles, Shiva and Shakti. This divine riddle is beyond the scope or range of the most elevated intellectual consciousness to perceive or to understand. To solve this riddle, is to become the ready. Spirit and Nature by Swami Vivekananda. The truly <coughs> spiritual, the truly spiritual, see spirit as spirit, not as matter. It is spirit that makes nature move. It is the reality in nature. Action is in nature, not in the spirit. Spirit is always the same, changeless, eternal. Spirit and matter are in reality the same. But spirit as such never becomes matter. And matter as such never becomes spirit. The spirit never acts. Why should it? It merely is. And that is sufficient. It is pure existence absolute, has no need for action. You are not bound by law, that is in your nature. The mind is in nature and is bound by law. All nature is bound by law, a law of its own, and this law can never be broken. If you could break a law of nature, all nature would come to an end in that instant. There would be no more nature. He who attains freedom breaks the law of nature, and for him, Nature fades away and has no more power over him. Each one will break the law but once and forever, and that will end his trouble with nature. Dear children, the whole world is within the Miramsa. A drop of water in the shape of a tear fell from the clouds. The tear fell when asked, Why is it weeping? It replied, oh, I am such a tiny, puny, insignificant thing. I am so small, oh, too small. The ocean is so big. I weep at my, I weep at my smallness. It was told, weep not. Do not confine yourself to name and form only. Look within you. See what you are. Are you not water? And what is the ocean? Is it not water too? Things which are equal to the same are equal to one another. Don't look yourself as being confined in space and time. 
look beyond the space and time to a reality. You become miserable when you confine yourself within time. Lift yourself above all. Not only matter and spirit are the same, but all are the same. True self is beyond all time. The whole world is within you. Just as in your dreams, you think yourself to be in the woods or forests, on the mountain, their worlds, they seem to be outside, but all are within you. If they are outside, then the room would be weighed down, the bed would be wet with the water you saw. Similarly, Vedanta says, all the world is within you, the astral, the psyche, worlds are within you, and you think that you are in them, just as a lady carrying a mirror on her thumb looks into the mirror and thinks she is in the glass, but it is just the reverse. So as a matter of fact, the world is in you. You are not the world. Moral, time and space, comprising the whole world, those seem to be outside, are really within you. Hence, confine not yourself to name and form. Rise above them, realize your reality. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar says, the finest aspect of matter is spirit. The processed aspect of spirit is matter. The whole world is a combination of spirit and matter. Therefore, spiritual practices are not any different from your being spirited, happy. Epistles of Swami Ram. Beloved Ram, you have explained your doubts in a plain, straightforward and clear manner. Doubts have arisen in the case of many absolute Advaitism. It's not the whole truth. Absolute Advaitism means negation of all the manifested words. To seek to enjoy the bliss emanating from universal love and service, you must look upon the universe as the expression of God. God is at once manifest and unmanifest. He is manifest as the individual jiva for the sake of Leela. He incarnates again with his mighty power and knowledge to lead the ignorant jivas in reality. His own varied expressions, the full knowledge of himself dwelling in their hearts. Clarity belongs to play, which you also assume when you deal with Ramdas and others. So the devotee is, he, playing a particular part. The Bhagavan is, Bhagavan is he, playing similarly that part. Here the so-called I, assumed on both sides, is there only for the sake of the play. While in fact, there is only one truth, that is all. And all. When Ramdas says, Ramdas did this, Ramdas did that, he refers to this body which is a particular expression of Ram, through which, as its indwelling reality, Ram works out his Leela. The instrument and the wielder of the instrument being one, you may express yourself. The first person as I, or in the third person as you will. Let the consciousness that all things and beings are one be always with you. The absolute oneness, coupled with this inevitable dual sense of play. You write, my beloved Gurudev, so you have assumed the part of a disciple. You have assumed duality. You can do so for the sake of the communion of love, knowing as you do that there is only one reality that is both and at once. Prayer is a necessary part of God's play. For the struggling aspirant on his Godward path, to enable him to keep up contact with the high ideal he has to reach and to draw inspiration and strength from the divine, all compassionate, almighty force. The prayer you refer to was written by a friend in Punjab. Reading this letter so far, you will know that the prayer and the dual aspect of the reality they are placed in the perfect oneness of all. In memoriam, P. V. Vishwanathan, an ardent devotee of the ashram from Mumbai, was called by Virat Prabhu on 28th May. Sri Narendra Pai, an old worker of the ashram, the husband of Swami, Asimadi Shamla, who prepared Prasad, was also called by Virat Papa. Sri T. N. Sheshan, an old and ardent devotee of Bhargat, was also called by Virat Papa. We pray for Papa's blessings on the departed soul for eternal rest. He is a disorder. Ananda Shum News, 15,500 crore Namja Bhetnya for third world peace. The total Jabba received the third round. Uh, 
the month of May is 200 crores. The grand total of the award and so far is Guru Purnima. Right from the day one of our entry into this world, we need a Guru for everything. Guru Purnima is an occasion. When we parade before our mental vision, several Gurus who have been guiding us at every stage and helping us to become aware of and express our inner potential. This theme is reiterated in the following words of Swami Shiva. Behold the entire universe as Guru's Rupa. See the guiding hand, the awakening voice, the illumining touch of the Guru, every object. The Supreme Guru manifests in visible nature will teach you the most valuable lessons of life. The silent, all-enduring earth with its lofty forbearance and shady fruit, shady fruit-bearing tree with its willing self-sacrifice, the mighty banyan tree reposing with patience in the tiny seeds, dripping drops whose persistence waves away the rocks, the planets and the seasons with their orderly prosperity and regularity, and divine gurus to him who will look and receive. We celebrate Guru Purnima on the 5th of this month. On this occasion, let us reflect on these thoughts. Pray to the Supreme Guru who is seated within. Bless us to be aware of him in his creation and serve him in all. Virat Papa's 57th Mahasamadhi Day will be observed on the 25th of this month. On this sacred occasion, Vishan offers his humble homage to Virat Papa with a prayer for the speedy spiritual progress of all culminating in eternal happiness. Thought for the month, God and the world are not different. The sun gives light. It's a projection. Sun is light in itself. Similarly, world is God himself. Manifestation and manifest are one and the same. There are no two entities. You cannot say that world exists apart from God. Everything is see, Projection means the same and manifest is seen as manifestation. When our mind is still, sattvic nature exists. When the mind is moving in rajas and tamas, when the mind is moving, this rajas and tamas occurs. Is it not? When our mind is still, sattvic nature exists. Actually, we have been told that these three, Sattvic, Rajasik and Tamasik, are in Wonderland. Probably the Almighty Lord of the Universe has given us steps and to go beyond the field. Tamas and Rajas does not help us to go, go up. Whereas Sattvic enables us to go. So we try to develop sattvic thoughts and then go beyond. That is why in every mantra you will find Brahmanandam, Paramasakutam, Evanam, Jnanamukti, Dandvatitam, Gaganasvatasham, Tattvamasyadi Raksham, Yegam Nityam, Vimaramajaram, Sarvati, Sakshi Bhutam, Bhavatitam, Triguna Rehitam. Triguna Rehitam. Oh, but Papa has got its own, its own importance. From the Rajas and Tamas, so long as the Rajas and Tamas are there, it is difficult to feel his nearness. Probably we can interpret like that. The nearness of God is felt when we are in Satic state. The Reconciled, composed, matured. No? But we have to go beyond. That is why in every mantra he says, you know, Trigun Rehita. We are not to satisfy ourselves with that. 
that which is witnessing all the three. This should not be lost. Anyway, in today's uh, uh, reading, what is more important is normally there is a divide between spirit and matter, and we see anything that is concerned with the spirit, we call it as spiritual. Anything that is concerned with the matter is called material or worldly. Now, through all these Mahatma, words of the Mahatma. We are trying to understand that both spirit and matter are one. Papa puts in a simple language, you know, without without matter, spirit cannot be realized. Spirit as such, without spirit, matter as such cannot exist. So both manifest and then we manifest. Then let us be satisfied. We are the manifest world. We are only trying to understand the spirit in us. That is enough. Going beyond and all that, that we will take care. Let us try. We are we have been so far identifying spirit as spirit and man, matter as matter. We will try to see the spirit in the matter, which is called the expansion of love circle. You got that example, you know, the TV. The TV becomes operable, functional. Only when the electricity is there. We don't know that. We are watching the TV, suddenly the power goes, you know, or the TV stops. When the program gets interrupted, you know, we blame everybody, we curse everybody. What a time for this electricity department to sit down. You know, Still, we don't realize that there is a combination. Of matter and spirit, then only there is something for you to enjoy, something for you to learn, something for you to relax. So every time when you sit before the TV, before any 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 gadget, suddenly you know we should start thinking. How to relate my We have seen a dead body, and we are seeing ourselves. What is it? That makes the dead body dead body. What is it that makes us we as we? You know? Then we clearly see the matter and spirit. Now this matter is there, the body is there, mind is there, intellect is there. But if the spirit is not there, it is called dead body. Immediately we try to destroy the mind. So we are now praying to him. We are unaware of this. The, the sense of individuality works only because of the spirit behind it. And we enjoy the existence of spirit because there is a sense of individuality there. Without a bhakta, Bhagavan is not there. So let us not remove from our mind, you know, as a spiritual aspirant, I should remove the... No, it is not like that. Gandhiji's approach was entirely based upon it. Either under the banner of spirituality, you don't retire yourself from this. Because he is there in the manifestation. If we remember the word correctly, he, this is what he said. If somebody has assured me, assures me that I can realize God if I go to Himalaya, I would have gone. But then only I came to know he is not beyond his creation. To, to love his creation is to love him, love his creation is to love him. So that is why he was trying to combine spirituality and uh, seva. Spirit and matter. Matter is not something to be eschewed. Every, every seed, you know, as an agriculturist, you will, you will be able to understand it. Every seed, it looks as if it is sentient. But it contains the insentient power. Sorry. Every seed looks insentient, but it contains the sentiency in the form of the life force. When I keep the seed here, it will not move. But when I put it in the earth, a conducive atmosphere, in a few days it sprouts. Suddenly I realize it is there, it is not compromised. 
the I, I can enjoy the 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 the, the fruit land, the agricultural uh, vegetables or anything, only if it sprouts. If it stays as the unmanifested, this thing no. We are all enjoying all these things, but at the same time we are intellectually under the banner of spiritual practices, ignoring. Mm -hmm. So this is what is aimed at. When we try to analyze this matter and spirit, we are giving equal importance for matter and spirit. Everything is handled with love. As you know, Baji says, there are only three things in this world. Me, the devotee, he, the Lord, and the rest of the things are particles of us. So matter and spirit, let us not break our head. Matter and spirit are there. Matter and spirit are equally horrible. Equally, because without that, no. We are all talking about God, God realization, spirit, uh, spiritual journey, everything, because you know we have got a mind and intellect which He has given to us. So we make use of His gifts to know Him. If the gifts are not here, we will not be able to know Him. Every, every For our research, which is guaranteed only by otherwise it does not matter. <laughs> matter matters because of spirit in within, otherwise it does not matter. <laughs> Yo, Om Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Om Shri Ram, Jai Ram. Jai Jai Ram Om Jai Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Om Jai Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Om Jai Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Om Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Om. Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Om. Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Om. Shri Ram. Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Om Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Om Shri Ram, Hello.